Joining me now is the People's Actions Homes Guarantee Campaign Director, Tara Raghavir. Tara, I want you to start right at the beginning here. Could you first explain what is People's Action? Sure. So the Homes Guarantee Campaign is a campaign that's rooted at People's Action, a national organizing network. The Homes Guarantee organizes with over 50 tenant-led organizations across the country that are building power with tenants in their buildings, on their blocks, across their cities. We're sort of experimenting with a new practice of tenant organizing, tenant unionizing. Uh, the basic premise is very simple, that there are more of us than there are them and that there's strength in numbers. So we're trying all sorts of things all over the country, and that's a little bit about who we are. Can you explain the inspiration behind the Homes Guarantee campaign? Because you are the director. So what led to this movement? We live in the richest country in the history of the world, and we believe that we can and we must guarantee that every person in this country has a safe, secure, sustainable, truly and permanently affordable home. And we think that's a relatively simple premise, but it's one that we say is complicated by a conspiracy of the profiteers, people who have convinced us that there's no way to provide housing in this country without thinking first and foremost about profit. And our objective is to actually turn that thinking on its head and start to prioritize housing the people first and foremost and guaranteeing housing as a public good to everyone in this country who needs it. I want to talk about some numbers here that I found pretty startling. So Moody's Analytics found that for the first time in two decades, the national average rent to income ratio reached 30 percent in the fourth quarter of 2022. This means that most people in the U.S. are considered rent stressed. When you hear that stat, what's your reaction? The rent is too damn high and it's been too damn high for a long time, but more and more people are in more severe pain when it comes to paying their rent check every month. What we have to understand is that there's no county in this country where a minimum wage worker can afford a two bedroom apartment, not an urban county, not a suburban county, not a rural county. There's no place in this country where a minimum wage can get you a safe, affordable home. And that crisis is playing out in all of our communities across the country. Homelessness is on the rise. People are forced to rent in more and more insecure uh, housing situations. Tenants' rights are being violated right and left. And meanwhile, their landlords are making more profits than ever before. Something's got to give. The market can't continue functioning like it is. And it's about both protecting tenants, but also stabilizing the American economy. Something that you've said before that stuck out to me, I'll read it to you. You said the rent crisis is a crisis that's really decades in the making. When you think back, I was always taught, you know, you can pick yourself up by the bootstraps, the American dream, white picket fence, you own a home or at least have a roof over your head. So when did this kind of take a turn? And can you walk us through the decades of this crisis level here? So it's actually really centuries. I mean, the history of this country is a history of commodified land and housing. It's a history of racist policy across the board and specifically on issues like housing that has allowed access to wealth for some and kept out others out of access to wealth intentionally. The racial wealth gap has everything to do with the question of who can access loans to own homes and pass on generational wealth in this country. So there's really no uh, no recent moment of inflection that we can point to. It's, it really has been decades or even centuries in the making in this country under a system of racial capitalism that's particular to the American economy. And then in recent history, we've seen in the last decade or so since the last financial crisis, the ways that the uh, the crisis played out disproportionately uh, to harm communities of color and poor and working class communities who haven't recovered from the crisis in 2008 and are the people who are most vulnerable in today's market as well. Yeah, the low housing inventory didn't even fully bounce back from the 2008 crisis to where we are today. 